Hey everyone, and welcome to Focus Your Ads podcast, where we talk all about Google Ads. My name's Glenn, and I'm joined here with Dan. In this episode, we're going to be answering a few more questions about Google Ads. So let's get right into it. Dan, here's my first question. My Merchant Center just got suspended. Do you have any tips on how I can get my account back? Yeah, so Merchant Center suspensions have been going wild lately. There's been so many of them. A lot of them are due to the misrepresentation area. So we're getting a lot of suspensions in that area. That's what I'm finding the most, and especially with new accounts. So for one, being a new account, I think you definitely have a little bit of a red flag right off the start. If you had an account up for a while, you have a website that's been going for a while, you have a little more, I think you have a little more leeway with Google. Like they're going to give you a little more leeway because you've been running for a while. Now, don't get me wrong. I've seen accounts that have been running for a while that do get suspended. So it doesn't mean just because you have a an account that's been running for a while, that means you're not going to get suspended. It definitely can mean you get suspended. So for someone that is suspended, there are lots of things that you can do. First off, what I always suggest is going through your website, go through every little page that you have on your website, at least every page type. For example, like the ones I'd be going through would be right off the start, I'd be looking for my policy page, look through, make sure it all makes sense. Because a lot of policy pages are just rambling and there's a lot of information there you don't need. And a lot of it you do need because it's there's information in there that would be like legal information saying we're using your personal information for this. So all that should be in there, but just make sure it makes sense to everyone. So go through it, read it all. A lot of times I've seen people in Shopify, they add a policy page and they forget these square brackets around it. And it says, please add information here. And there's square brackets around it. And that's like a dead giveaway for Google that this site owner has just slapped up a website and they're on their way. So you want to make sure that you are taking time and making sure it makes sense for your customers. Same for refund. You want to have a really solid refund page in there. And this refund page should also have, shouldn't have any of those square brackets because I've seen those before in there too. Make sure there's no filler text in there like that. It should be very clear how these people can go ahead and get a refund from your store. Same with shipping. It should be very clear what how shipping is going to work. If there's different shipping for different brands, like if you carry different brands, then it should have the shipping information for each brand. So people can go in there and understand how it's going to ship. Are they going to have to pay something? Is it going to be free shipping? Is it going to ship in one to two days? Are going to, how long are you going to take to process it? All these questions you should answer in your shipping. And you should have all this. Everything should be very consistent. So if you have something in your shipping policy, You should have that in your merchant center. You should have that in your ad copy. Everything should match it, line up. So make sure that you're consistent with all the information. This goes for contact info, goes for anything else on your website should be consistent. And especially with like shipping and pricing and that kind of thing. Also, another place to look is in your merchant center, look for disapprovals. You should fix all your disapprovals, even the warnings. There are some warnings that it's hard to fix. Like if you have a GTIN and you don't actually have a GTIN, you can still submit those products in a different way. Maybe even just pull them off the site for now until you get your suspension taken care of and then reintroduce them and try to figure out the GTIN problem. But I would definitely be looking at all my disapprovals and ensure that there's that we're we're going through them all. Like some of them, the big ones would be like policy violations. If you have a policy violation, like you're advertising, remarketing for something that's health related, that can get you a policy violation. So you want to make sure that those are dealt with. You also will get lots of policy violations for other things. Like I've seen the strangest ones like gun stuff that's related to guns. I've seen all kinds of these weird kind of policy violations, and they're not related to the actual products being sold. So if that's the case, you can have them reviewed. And you can do that even if you're suspended. You can have these each individually reviewed, but you should be taking care of that. Clean up everything in your merchant center. Clean up your website. It should look absolutely professional. It should look like your competitors' websites. It should be better than your competitors' websites. Just make sure that you're looking at every little detail. Uh, Another idea that I would have for you is to have a friend, someone that's not even in e commerce, actually go into your store and look through it and just have them actually make a purchase. They don't have to 
you can set it up on your store so it's so it's a free purchase or give them a coupon that they can use for free, but have them go through the whole process and make sure there's nothing that they stumbled across. Make sure that it's clear to them. Have them look over your shipping and make sure that it all makes sense to them. Someone that's outside the world of e-commerce and that wouldn't normally understand this. Make sure it makes sense because that's who Google is showing these ads to and you want to make sure that it makes sense to them. So there's, there's so many things that you can do to get your account unsuspended. And really, they're just little red flags and you have to keep finding these little red flags, remove them and move on to the next one. If you're interested, we do have another episode where we talked about this. And if just go back in our podcast episode, I don't know the number of it, but go back and you'll find this. And we did go over each of the questions there. Or I think it was we were doing misrepresentation uh, with uh, that kind of suspension. So just go through it. And go through each of those because we went through the whole policy in that podcast. So it's definitely worth a listen. So it might be one to put on the next watch list for you after you watch this one. Excellent. Now, Dan, you're talking about refund policy, shipping policy, stuff like that. These people own their stores. There, there's no obligation to have a refund, like offer a refund, but you have to be clear and same as shipping, you don't have to offer free shipping, but you have to be absolutely clear and consistent throughout your website of what your policy is. And that policy has to be self-explanatory. They, somebody should be able to read that policy and understand that there is no refunds or there is no free shipping or there is. It's still up to the owner to decide what to do with that, right? Yeah, that's right. And But yeah, it's all about making it really clear for the customer and whether you offer yeah, free shipping, whatever you offer, it doesn't really matter as long as, well, for one, it complies with what Google wants. But in this case, if you offer paid shipping, free shipping, that's your choice. But just make sure it's really clear. It's all laid out properly. Yeah, that makes, it's really important to have everything crystal clear for your, your customers. So just think about it from the customer's point of view, not from your point of view or from Google's point of view. Think about it from the customer's point of view and you'll be on the right track. Because that's what Google's thinking about. They're not thinking about making you happy. They're not thinking about, well, they might be thinking about making money from their company too, but (laughs) that's a different topic. But they're also, to make money for Google, they have to make the customers happy, the end user happy. And that's going to eventually, through ads, make them money. So let's go on to the next question, I guess, here. What's the difference with negative keyword match types? Negative keyword match types. So there's three types that we're, we're going to talk about quickly here. One is a broad match. One is a phrase match. And one is an exact match. Okay, so if you think that we're selling, say, porch swings or something like that, the broadest way to use negatives, this one has, like the broad match is the broadest way to use negatives. If you have no quotes, no brackets or anything around the word that you want to eliminate. Okay, so we want to eliminate, say, kids swings, because we only sell porch swings for adults. In order to do this, we can add the term kids as a broad match. Now, anytime anything shows up for the term kids, it will be excluded. So you have to be careful with this because it is very, very powerful. Uh, Phrase match is another one. This is one that you'll use quotation marks to mark the word or to mark the phrase, this allows you to exclude a phrase in the same order that it's presented. So an example of this would be, now keep in mind we're selling porch swings, how to build a swing. So maybe we want to exclude the how-to part so that other searches like how to use a swing are excluded, stuff like that. So in that case, we would put the how-to in quotations. The exact match, now this is exact match, doesn't allow for any variation. An example of this might be if you sell a brand Jungle Swings, but you aren't the brand, we might not want to show up for the exact brand term. We could then eliminate the brand itself, but keeping any other searches. So an example would be eliminate Jungle Swings, but wouldn't eliminate wooden Jungle Swings for sale near me. Use the brackets that are the square brackets are the ones that you would use on that. Yeah, that makes sense. And one other thing I, I was thinking about was keep in mind that the negative keywords are different from regular keywords. So if you're looking up match types on 
on Google and you find regular keyword match types, you're going to find a completely different definition than you do from negative keyword match types. Negative keyword match types are a simpler version. And there's, I guess, I don't know if they're simpler, but they're, it's easier to understand a negative keyword match type than it is to understand a regular keyword match type. Because regular keyword match type, it's like, it's similar kind of ideas, a phrase, but it's more a, it's more like, Take exact can be something different. So in a regular keyword, exact can be multiple different things that are almost the exact same meaning. Same with phrase. If it's a similar meaning, then Google will use that. And broad, it can be anything. It's crazy how broad can be with a regular keyword. But negatives, like you were mentioning, they're a lot tighter and they're easier to understand. Like broad, it's going to eliminate anything. Those keywords in any order that will be eliminated. Phrase, they have to be in the same order as what you how you type them and those will be eliminated in exact it's if you typed in jungle swings that's the only thing it's going to eliminate it's not going to eliminate anything else so it's it's they have their purposes and i use them all i like using them all and they each have a different purpose for me and i sometimes use them for my keyword sculpting or i'll use them to eliminate stuff it's there's lots of ways i use negative keywords but they are in a very important part of Google Ads. So understanding these three types is important. Excellent. Okay. So here's another question for you, Dan. And this is just a question that we have here. My shopping ads aren't working for me. How can I fix them? Okay. So if your shopping ads aren't working, we have there, like, it's a very broad question and there's a lot of things we can go into, but let's give you a few tips here and what you could look at to fix your shopping ads. For one, If you're running, say you're just running a single campaign, you could look at running a sculpted campaign or an alpha beta or like a three tier setup. The sculpt, I'm just meaning like you're, you're kind of taking the keywords and you're forcing certain keywords into the next level. Alpha beta would be this type of campaign. Same with like the low, medium and high type setup where you have three different priorities. And the reason I only go up to three is because Google only gives us three priorities. So that's just the most you can do. So that's something I would look into is trying to sculpt my keywords. So you might want to look at sculpting your beta keywords and see if you can put push your brand names up to the next level, maybe into the alpha. Maybe you put, want to put product names into the next level. It depends on your business, but there's a lot of different ways you can set this up. Adding negative keywords, as we just we were talking about negative keywords being important, this is another one. So on a, it could be a weekly basis. It could be every couple of days. You look at your search terms that come in and you're going to go in there and add negative keywords. And you don't want to just add them as exact match because that's what's going to come up as soon as you hit add as a negative keyword. If you check off the search term and hit as a negative keyword, it's going to be exact match. So that's, it's going to be like playing whack-a-mole if you do it that way, if you're only using exact match. You have to expand out a little bit. This is where you have to start thinking about the keywords in a different way. So for example, we had the swings, like how to build a swing. In that case, if we want to eliminate the how to, we'd have to think, okay, well, we don't want to just eliminate how to build a swing because other terms like this are going to be really high in the funnel. They're not going to convert really well. So we want to get anything that's how to. So let's eliminate that as a phrase. So now we're going to eliminate anything to do with how to. It's going to be gone. So we can think about it different ways like that. Same with broad. So if, for example, like Jungle Swings, maybe that's a competitor's brand and we never want to show up for it ever. We could put that as phrase or maybe let's use a different one here. Let's use Nike as an example because it's a specific brand and if a single word. So we could use that as a broad match. And then anytime Nike showed up, we'd never or we'd never show up for Nike in that case. So we're using a broad. So that's another way we can prevent ourselves from just constantly being in our negative keywords. You have to think a little bit when you're doing those. Another place you can go is bids. You want to adjust your bids. You can increase bids that maybe have a higher return on ad spend. So if you're in an e-commerce store, you can adjust those bids higher if they have a really good return on ad spend. If you have a really low return on ad spend, or maybe you've spent a ton of money on a certain product and it's got hundreds of clicks, but it's had no sales at all, maybe that's a product to turn off and a test having it off. Just make sure if you have the multiple campaigns that you don't just turn it off in one campaign. Turn it off in all the campaigns that you have running. Like if you have the the three-tier setup, turn it off in all three tiers. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. Just like if you're limited by budget, you can run the same kind of problems where you essentially lose your filter. 
Another area to look at is your device bids. So with device bids, you can adjust your bids for your mobile. You can adjust the bids for your desktop. You can adjust the bids for TV and missing one, tablet. You can adjust tablet as well. And you can change those bids. So if, for example, you get a really high conversion rate or you're getting really high ROAS for your computers, you can adjust that. So you can increase your bids for that. Or if you're getting a really bad return from tablets, you could turn those down. And so this is one area to look at. I wouldn't look at it every week. I would probably look at this one more on a monthly basis, maybe even by, or every two months, something like that. So it's not something you want to do all the time. Same with location bits, something you don't want to do all the time, but you can look at your locations and see where you're converting more often. And a great place to look at this is in the overview. You go into the overview tab and it'll actually show you, as long as you're at a, on the campaign, it'll show you the overview. You have to be on a single campaign too. You can't look at your whole account this way, but you'll see that they have a little map and it'll, you can change how the map looks and you can actually, it's like a heat map. So you can see the darker areas will show more conversions there lighter areas so it just it allows you to visualize what's happening in your campaign so i often will look at my overview to see some of these these different graphs that allow you to see the information in different ways so another one there too is your time like your you can do the time the hours or you can do the days and you can adjust those as well so again something i wouldn't do often but it's it's there Another thing you can do is add a remarketing portion. This isn't shopping, but it definitely helps your shopping campaign. If you're running like a performance max, it has its own remarketing built in. But if you're not, if you're running standard shopping, it doesn't have any remarketing built in. So you're going to want to add some remarketing because you want to get in front of those customers, stay in front of them, stay top of mind. So if they're searching for porch swings, you want to make sure that later on that when they're searching for porch swings again, that you are staying on top of mind. So you're the one that they're looking for because they know they can trust you. They've seen your ad around. They know you're you're selling the porch swings and you have the one that they want. And they don't, in this way, you won't get scooped up by a competitor when they go to do their final search for their, for the purchase. Also, your shopping campaigns can have a little bit of a remarketing. You can add a observation audience onto your, your campaign and you can adjust the bids. You could give maybe 30% higher bids for anyone that's returning to your store. And there's other things you can do with audiences here too. You can add other audiences and observe different audiences in there. Just make sure it's on observation. If you're going to put it on top of working shopping campaign, you can do targeting, but that is for if you're going to set it up in a certain way. So normally I will just layer it on top as observation. And then it just you're just looking at it until you adjust the bids. You can adjust the bids that way and increase them decrease them. So there's there's so many different things you can do in shopping ads and sometimes it can be overwhelming. Another thing would be to look at maybe performance max and try performance max if you've been doing this for a while. Like I said, I've said in one of the other podcasts that performance max can be some a place that you can go if you're struggling with your shopping ads. So but yeah there's lots of ideas there. Hopefully I didn't just overwhelm you with the amount of possibilities, but there's lots. Okay. Thanks, Dan. So thanks for listening, everybody, to the podcast today. Leaving a review would certainly help us out. We would love to hear your feedback. If you have any questions, feel free to send them to us at focusyourads.com. And remember, we don't use outsourcing when we're managing e-commerce accounts. We're committed to managing each account personally. Yeah, that's right. We are in business to help you become successful with your e-commerce and online service business. So have a great day, guys, and we'll see you in the next episode.